Hi, I'm James Porter, and this is the video on how to multiply single digit numbers with a 100 bead abacus. If you have maneuvered your way through all the addition videos and solved all the subtraction problems, you are in the right place. Let's get started, as multiplication is a little more tricky than subtraction, but is a lot like addition. So let's begin with an easier problem. We're going to do 3 times 2. Now when you multiply on an abacus, all you're really doing is adding beads multiple times. So in 3 times 2, you're just going to add 3 beads 2 times, like so. 3, 3. So that gives us our answer. That would be 3 times 2. Let me show you one more time. 1, 2, 3 times 2 of those. 1, 2, 3. That would give us our answer. You don't need to write this down, but it would be helpful later. Of 6, this is what our abacus should look like. Let's try a little trickier one. Maybe this one will give you a little more help with how to do multiplication problems. Let's try 4 times 5. So, like we did with 3 times 2, we're going to multiply the first number, 4, by 5. So we're going to put four, we're going to add four beads onto the abacus five times. You may want to keep a tally, this may help later on. So, so if this isn't confusing, I'm going to make my tally in the upper right and my numbers that I'm using to remember in the upper left. So let's begin with my tally. I've got one group of four, two groups of four, that's two, four, two, four. Now this would be four times two, this would be eight. Now we're gonna go another four, but one, two. We ran out of spots in the 10, so I'm gonna write two to remember for later. Move one 10 bead over, and move all the one beads back so I can continue three, four. And that will give us our third group of four. We need to do two more now, two, four. That would give us four groups of four, two, four, that gives us five groups of four. And I'm going to move these back and move the two over. This gives us the number 20. As it's easy to tell, but I'm still going to write it down, and I'm going to go through my sheet here pretty quick. So this is what it should look like on the abacus. My answer is in the middle. My two is my notes for when we ran out of ones and my tally is how many times we had to move four over. And we got to five, so four times five is in fact 20. Now I'm gonna do one more example problem and maybe I'll add another one in there if this seems like it's a little confusing yet. So let's do six times three. Now this is the same as adding six plus six plus six, so we're gonna add six three times. So this is my first six. I'm going to put a tally on here as one. Then I'm going to start one, two, three, four. I'm going to write four in the left hand corner of my sheet so I can remember that. Then I can move one ten over and move the ten ones back. Now I'm going to continue. I have five, six. That's my second group of, ten, of sixes. So this shows me that six times two, because we have two groups, is 12. But we wanna do six times three, so we need one more group of six, two, four, six. This gives us our answer for six times three, which is in fact one, and two, four, six, eight. Which is in fact 18. This may not have needed a sheet of paper, but for multiplication, it is really helpful to have. Again, this is what the answer should look like on the abacus. This is my tally for when we had to go to the tens place. And this is how many times we multiplied six. Now we're gonna try one more just because I feel like it would be good to have another example. We're gonna try a really hard one. We're gonna try seven times eight. So. And I'm going to write this one down on my sheet, just so I have an in, a little information. 
I wrote the 8 on this side so that I know when I have 8 tallies over here, I don't need to add any more 7s. Let's start. We can add 7 to start. 4, 6, 7. This is our first group of 7, so we can add 1 tally. Now I'm going to count off 1, 2, 3 beats. I'm going to write that in the left. And now I can move 1, 10 over and move my 10 ones back. And then continuing up from 3, I can go 4, 5, 6, 7. Now that I have 7, that is my second group, I will add another tally. So if you look at my sheet now, I have my equation here. I have my number 3 for when we had to go to the tens place. And I have the number of times we have got counted 7. So in this case, 2, because they're tallies. And so this shows us that if we were doing 7 times 2, we would have 14. But we want to continue on. So we're going to continue on and count another 7 off. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. I'm going to cross off this 3 in the upper left and write 6 instead. Now I can move 1 10 over and move the 10 ones back. Now continuing from 6, I have to get to 7 and I just move seven, one bead. So I'm gonna put another tally down to show that I've counted seven three times. Now I'm gonna add another seven because we've still got five other sevens to add. Two, four, six, seven. Now I can add another tally because we have four groups of seven here. So let's check up on my sheet again. Here is our equation. Here is when I've had to go to tens the tens ta tally, and this is how many times I have added seven. Four times, so I've got four times to go. I'm halfway there. At this, yeah, let's just continue on now. All right, one, two, and now that I've got that, I will cross off my six and write a two down so I can remember it. At this point, I can move one more 10 over and move 10 ones back. And continuing from 2, I need to make it to 7. So 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. And there I have my 5. So now I have 3 tens, because I've gone to 3 tens. I have counted 5 sevens, and here's the equation again. So we've got 3 more to go. I can count off 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 beads. And now I can move another 10 over and move these 10 ones back. And now I've got to get to 7, so I can go 5 from 5, go 6, 7, and add another tally. Now we're up to 6 7s adding. Now we can go 2, 4, 6, 7. Now we're at 7 7s. So let's look at my sheet again. We've gone to 4 10s, so 1, 2, 3, 4. Each one of these corresponds to a different number here. We have counted seven groups of seven, so this would be our answer if we were multiplying seven by seven, which is two, four, two, four, six, eight, nine, 49, which if we were doing seven times seven, that'd be all fine and dandy, but we're doing seven times eight. So we have one more seven to add. I'm gonna move one beat over, cross off this five, and put one down so I can remember that for later move one ten over and move my ten ones back. Now I'm going to continue from one up to seven, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Now here is my answer because I can put one more tally and see that I have I have my notes over here for my five tens that I moved up to. I have me, my equation on top, and I have eight tallies representing eight times I counted seven. So let's figure out what number we have. Two, four, five, and now two, four, six. So our answer here is 56. Now I'm going to go through this one one more time but I'm going to show you a quick shortcut for if you get to halfway there for numbers like this that are large to make it a little easier. So we're doing 7 times 8 again. We're going to start with 7, 2, 4, 6, 
seven. And we're gonna continue. One, two, three. I will write down three. And I can write down one tally for starting. And I'll write down my equation in the middle. So I'm at three. I can move one 10 over, move these 10 ones back and continue four, five, six, seven. There's my second group of sevens. I can add another tally. Now I'm gonna count off seven more. One, two, three, four, five, six. I'm gonna cross off three and write down six to, re to remind myself of that for later. Then I can move one 10 over and move these 10 ones back and count seven, just one bead, because that's all I need. And I'm gonna mark another tally for a third 10, third group of seven. Now, like I said before, this is seven. This would be three. That's how many times we've counted seven. These are my tens beads, one, two, and this is the equation. So seven times three equals 21. Now we're gonna continue one more time till we get halfway there. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. All right, I'm gonna add one more tally. Now if you notice, we have four times seven, which is two, four, six, 28. So four is exactly half of eight. So if your second number is even, if you get half of the number that is there, then you can double it. So in this case, four is half of eight. So because four is half of eight, at this point, if we double this number, we should get the same number as if we were counting, as if we were counting eight sevens. So we have two, four, six, eight. So I'm gonna cross off this six. And now we're doing it just like it's an addition problem. We figured out that 28 is our answer to seven times four. And we know that four is half of eight. So we're halfway counting. And so this is now pretty much like 28 plus 28. So now we can do our math. So here's kind of a representation of what we've done so far. We wanted to get seven, seven times eight. So we multiplied out, we made seven groups of, or four groups of seven, one, two, three, four, which we figured out was half of eight. Because I know I'm halfway there counting groups, I can just do 28 plus 28, which also mean must mean seven times four plus seven times four equals seven times eight. So now instead of solving out and counting four more groups of seven, I just can add on 28. So I can count off one, two. I'm gonna make note of the two. I can move one 10 over and move these 10 ones back. And continuing from two, I need to get to eight, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Now I need to add two more on top, one, two. And now I can figure out that this is 56 as my answer. And there we go. So this is what your abacus should look like. This is just another way of doing it. It can be easier, but it can also be a pain. So whichever way you feel is easier to do, you do. And if I show you my notes from last time, I have the same equation, the same answer, but I only had to count half as many sevens. So sometimes for larger numbers, this can help and sometimes it can be a pain. So if you, if you feel like you can use it very effectively, you can use it, but I would suggest just counting out sevens. So seven, that'd be one group of seven and so on and so forth for as many as you need. Now that I've explained a couple ways on how to solve multiplication problems using a 100 beat abacus, I'm gonna give you a couple problems to try on your own. These ones are nowhere near as hard as the ones we have done so far. So we're gonna start, again, I will give you 10 seconds for each problem, but you may need more time. We're gonna start by doing two times seven. Your answer
answer should be 14, and your abacus should look like this. Did you get it? Great job. Now let's try 5 times 8. Your answer should be 40, and your abacus should look like this. Did you get it? Well done. Let's try one more before I sign off. Let's try 3 times 9. Your answer should be 27, and your abacus should look like this. You've done a great job learning how to use a 100-beat abacus to multiply single-digit numbers today. If you need more help, you can go back and watch this video again, or if you click on the button below that says Examples, I will show you how I solved the three example problems. I'm James Porter signing off for now, but remember, a broken abacus is no one's best friend, because no one can count on it.